In this video, we'll be creating an intro splash screen using a Lottie animation. Hey guys, welcome back to this new video. After the stack series, I didn't quite know which kind of videos to continue making given that I covered everything for the architecture that I use in the client's applications. So in this video, I decided to go back to showing you guys how I implement certain features that the clients want in the application. For this one, the client wanted an intro splash screen using a Lottie animation. This code will be added into the client's actual code so you won't have the source for that. But there is a written tutorial on fullstacks.com that you can follow and see all of the source code. The animation on the screen right now is the one that's the actual splash screen. But because it's not as interesting as this one, we'll be using this as our splash screen animation. Head over to foldstacks.com and open up the Lottie splash screen intro in Flutter tutorial. This is where you can see a preview of the animation and also see all of the source code required to implement this functionality. If you want to build this into your own application, we will be building it on top of the startup logic tutorial that I've already shared as well. You can go to the search section and type in startup and then look at the first tutorial. You basically have a startup view with a startup view model and you have an initialize function where you check everything that needs to be checked before you navigate the user to the actual home view for the application. So you can implement that first, I'll link it in the top right of this video and then come back to this tutorial. With that said, let's get to the functionality itself. The first thing you have to do is add Lottie into the pubspec.yaml file, which I already have, version 0.6.0. And then you can go over to lottiefiles.com and get um, any of the free Lottie animation files and place it inside a folder that is inside the assets folder called Lottie. Once you've placed your animations in that folder, you can add the assets to the popspec.yaml under the assets section. When the package is downloaded, that's basically all the setup we need for the Lottie package. Next, you can open up the startup view where we will simply play one of the animations in the center of the screen so that you can see how easy it is to play a Lottie animation. We will be using the Lottie.asset constructor and passing in the path that we put in the pubspec.yaml to our login.json file. When you launch the app now, you'll see the animation playing very quickly and then jumping to the final view. The client wants the animation to complete every time that the app is open. The actual animation is about one second or two seconds, so it's not a long wait. What we need to do in code is make sure that this initialize function finishes and we do not navigate before the animation is complete. So in order for us to animate away, both of these conditions has to be satisfied before we navigate to the actual welcome view. We'll start off by making sure that we know when the animation has completed. To do this, we need an animation controller. And when I use animation controllers, I prefer to use the use animation controller hook from Flutter hooks. So you can add Flutter hooks to your pubspec.yaml file. And then you can head over to the startup view where we will change the stateless widget into a hook widget. Then we'll create a final variable in the build method called animation controller. And this will call the use animation controller function to get us an animation controller. So as you see, that was two lines for setting up the animation controller where one wasn't even a complete line change. The reason I do that is because I don't want to convert the class into a stateful widget and then keep track of the animation controller locally and then still extend the single ticker mixin. And then we still have to move the actual initialization into the init state, which is just more code required for a very basic piece of functionality. That is why I would rather use the hook widget and just get the animation controller in the build function with one line of code. The next thing we need to do is supply this controller to the Lottie.asset constructor. This constructor also takes in a function called onLoaded, which returns to you the composition as one of the parameters in the function call. We can use this composition to set the time of the controller and then start playing it as soon as we've set up the animation controller. We'll set the duration on the animation controller equal to the duration of the composition returned. 
and then we'll call the forward function on the animation controller and that will play the animation for us. Now that we have this animation controller, we can use it to listen to its status changes. With these changes and the callback we supply, we'll be able to figure out when the animation has completed and then call a function on our model. To do this, we call the add status listener function, which returns to us an animation status in the callback. And inside of that callback, we will have an if statement that checks if the status equals completed. If the status is completed, we will call indicate animation complete on our model. This function doesn't exist, so you can use the control full stop shortcut to generate that for you. And on Mac, that would be command full stop, and that will bring up an options dialog where you can select create method. Then we'll add a new field called animation complete and set that value to false. And inside the indicate animation complete function, we will set animation complete to true. So now we'll know when we call either of these functions if the animation has completed. Let's move on to the initialize function. So as you see, the main thing that we want to delay is the replace with function call on the navigation service. This is what's performing the actual navigation. So we want to make sure when this is called, the animation has completed. To do that, we'll create a new function called replace with that returns a future. This function will take in a named parameter called route and a named parameter called arguments. For this functionality to work, we need to save the route and the arguments in case this function is called before the animation has been completed. So you can head to the top of the startup view model class where we'll create a new private field called destination route as well as a dynamic private field called destination arguments. This is where we will be storing our route and arguments called in case it is called before the animation has completed. We'll start off by creating a variable called has destination route and this will simply check if the destination route is not equal to null. Then we'll create another variable called has destination arguments and we'll do the same thing with the destination arguments and just check if it's not equal to null. Then we want to make sure that we don't set the destination route or argument if it has a value. So we'll check if it doesn't have a destination route, we'll set the value equal to the route being passed in through the function parameters. We'll do the exact same thing for the destination arguments and set it equal to the arguments passed in through the function parameter. And all of that setup comes down to this one conditional statement where we want to make sure that we don't navigate if the animation is not complete. And we also do not navigate if the initialization hasn't reached the navigation call yet. So in that if statement, we will check if the animation is complete and we'll check if the destination route is not equal to null. This will ensure that the function has been called with a route and it will also ensure that the indicate animation complete function has also been called. Inside of the conditional statement, we will add the replace with function call to the navigation service and then we'll simply pass in the destination route as the route and the destination arguments as the arguments for the view. The last thing to make sure of is that if the animation completes after the business logic functionality, we still perform the navigation. To do that, we'll change the indicate animation complete function into a future. And then at the end of that function, we will call the replace with function and await on that. That's everything that we need. And if you run the code now, you'll see that the animation completes playing before it goes to the next view. So the entire thing will play out. I don't know what happens at the end there. It like pauses weirdly and then it will navigate to the welcome view. And that's it. If you guys have any suggestions on tutorials, please let me know. I am kind of struggling on what to make, especially because the series that I've built covers everything that we do in production now. My idea was to share the SQLite implementation next that we use, as well as maybe a video on how we handle forms and form validation in the client applications. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next week.